Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome back to our ongoing Coco's 2DX tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at basic graphics. Now, just like the previous tutorial, this one is based on a text tutorial that I did about a year back on Game from Scratch. You can see it up here in front of us. Uh, it's called Basic Sprites Positioning, Parenting, and Coordinate Systems. And guess what we're going to cover today? Basic Sprites Positioning, Parenting, and Coordinate Systems. So basically we're covering the essentials of 2D graphics. Um, so everything we cover here for the most part will be mirrored on Game From Scratch. So if you need the source code or the graphics or whatever we're using, uh, you can head on over to Game From Scratch. I'll put a link down in the comment below. Now as with all tutorials, I assume you've seen the previous tutorial. Um, so I will build on, and in fact build on top of the code I used before, but build on top of the knowledge we've already learned. So if you have not used the previous tutorials and you are completely new to Coco 2DX, I really recommend you go back and watch the previous tutorial before jumping into this one or you're going to be quite confused. Um, so as I said, we're going to use the same basic code. In fact, I'm using the exact same code as our template. We're going to work from where we stopped off last time with our hello world example. And I'm just going to gut out pretty much the hello world part. So no more text, no more speaking. Um, so this has already been compiled so you don't have to sit here and watch my uh, computer turn away. And what we want to do today is just draw some sprites on screen. Very simple goal. And it's quite simple to do, to be honest. But first things first, you're going to need a couple of sprites. Now, I use the iconic Autobot and Decepticon logos. And then you just have to take them in and copy them into your resources folder of your game. So you can see that I haven't because I deleted them. One second. All right. So now I've gone ahead and I've copied those into my folder. So if you come down here into your project file, just make sure you copy whatever images you're going to use into your resource folder. So what we're using is... Uh, a pair of PNG files. One, Both of them have transparent backgrounds. One's called Autobot, the other one is called Decepticon. If you open them up, you'll notice no background color, like so. Oops, uh, there we go. So we've got these two PNGs. Now you can use whatever you want, just make sure you use the corresponding and correct file format. Now, in terms of file format supported, they are by Cocos 2 dx Oops, wrong window. Let's bring that up. You can use uh, these pixel formats of these file extensions. So your most common are basically PNG, uh, JPEG. JPEGs uh, generally give you a slightly smaller file size, slightly worse image quality, and no transparency support. Uh, WebP, uh, newer format, um, works well actually. Uh, TIFF, Targa, PVR version two, version three, uh, and these three, which are somewhat rare. Uh, one is specifically an Andrino GPU format. Um, one is for GLELS2, ES2 textures, and uh, S3TC is a uh, DirectX oriented encrypted format created by S3 Technologies, who I don't even know if they're still with us these days, to be honest. Uh, but for the most part, you will probably end up using PNG unless you have a reason otherwise. Uh, it's a nice compromise between size and quality, and it supports uh, multiple different formats, um, as you can see here, and multiple different ways of supporting transparency. So PNG is definitely a good choice if you have no other options. Uh, but regardless of what you choose, drop a file of any of these particular formats into your resources folder, and we'll go from there. So now that we have our PNG files that we can load, let's go ahead and actually use them. So first thing we're going to do is create a sprite. Now, a sprite has some historical meaning, but basically it's just uh, a graphic that draw is drawn on screen and can be moved. Uh, it goes way back to the early 80s. Um, engineers at Texas Instruments named sprite as part of the, in their documentation for chip feature that actually supported moving graphics so you had stationary graphics which were drawn one way and sprites or movable graphics built right into the chipset so your early 8-bit um, computers like your commodore 64 your atari 800 or 800 xl etc had spriting hardware so they had hardware in there that could support say 8 12 16 moving sprites and in the early days of 8-bit and even 16-bit consoles, the number of sprites or moving images that the console supported was sort of like uh, the number of CUDA cores or textured polygons we could push now. That used to be the benchmark by which you judge these game systems. So that's where the word sprite basically originates. It's back with uh, Texas Instruments using it to document how their chipset worked. But a sprite is basically just a moving graphic or a graphic and positional information. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create one. We just create it by passing in the file name. Um, by default, this will go to your resources folder, so we don't need to give it a directory. And unless you put it in a subdirectory, you don't need any more pathing information other than the file name, like so. So this will go ahead and create a sprite for us. 
and sprite dot set position. So we're gonna put it in the world somewhere at zero and zero. This is important because I want to show you how the coordinate systems work by default in Cocos 2DX. So position the sprite, and then finally we're gonna add child of our sprite. Now the this call, this our class here, hello world, you may recall, is a Cocos 2D layer. And that's important. We'll get back to that in a little bit. So basically all we're saying here is to our layer, add a child named Sprite. And I'm going to go ahead and build that. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so our code is now up and going. Our file is in place. And in theory, when I run this, our image will show. But probably not how you expect it to. Ooh, kaboom. Uh, break. So Sprite. Yeah, because I... Don't know how to spell. All right, so that's what happens when your sprite is not found, which coincidentally, you should probably actually check to see if your sprite returned as null, because um, if there's an error occurred, that's what will happen, and then your code will explode, like mine just did. Um, so there is the results of a typo in your file name or a file not found, and here you go. So when it actually works and you pass in the correct file name, you will see your sprite is now drawn. Now, this is important to figure out what's going on here. There's two things that you just got shown by the defaults of how Cocos 2DX draws. First off, remember here is our sprite, but we're only seeing this portion of it. Now why is that? Well, there's two things at work here. First off, the coordinate system of Cocos 2DX graphics follows that of the OpenGL standard, which is to say that the origin or the place where 00, zero corresponds to is in the bottom left hand corner. Now there's two ways of going about things. Basically there's the OpenGL way, which is the bottom left corner, and the uh, DirectX way, which is the top left corner. And you're still going to run into some confusion here because some things, Windows coordinates, UI coordinates, are still going to be relative to the top left. So when you get the most cursor position, for example, it's going to be relative to the top left corner of your window. So there's some conversion that's going to have to go on. But when you say 0, 0 as a position in Cocos 2DX, that means bottom left here. However, when you're dealing with a sprite, the point within the sprite that 0, 0 represents is its midpoint. So that's a decision that Cocos 2DX made, and it varies from probably the majority of 2D game engines. And the majority of 2D game, 2D game engines default to 0, 0 in the sprite, referring to its top left corner. Now we can easily change this though. So if we want to instead refer to a sprite by um, say the bottom left hand corner, we can do that. And let's do that right now. And that's using something called the pivot point or anchor point. And let's go ahead and set the anchor point in here. So now let's go sprite, oops, set anchor point and zero and zero. Now that's actually a vector two, so I should probably make one like so. Now, these coordinates are yet another coordinate system we're dealing with too, here. Oops, Vec2, not Vector2. Now, this coordinate system here is something called normalized coordinates. And what you're saying here is that um, 0 and 0 in a normalized coordinate represent the bottom left-hand corner. This is how um, UV coordinates are done and OpenGL texture coordinates are done. Whereas the coordinate 1, 1 represents the very, very top right corner. So you never have a value of less than zero or never have a value of more than one when you're dealing with normalized coordinates. And what we're saying here is set the anchor point to the bottom left-hand corner of our sprite. And that's it. Now we'll go ahead and run this, and now you'll see a profound result. Sorry, my computer's being somewhat slowish today, but here we go. Bang. So now we are drawing... Still, our origin is the bottom left corner, but when we say draw this at 0, 0, we're saying draw this sprite relative to its bottom left-hand corner. Now, keep in mind, a sprite is ultimately square, so even if you've got this black area in the background, that's just transparent pixels. There's still a pixel here to make it the bottom left. It's just a pixel of transparency, so when you draw another item with it, um, 
or underneath it, etc., it will be obscured. But when you're talking the bounds of this particular sprite, it's still picture an entire rectangle, even if there's no visible pixel being drawn due to transparencies. So that's how we set positions. That's how the coordinate system works. So quick recap, the bottom left-hand corner of the screen is 0, 0 in pixel coordinates when dealing with um, screen dimensions. The default for a sprite, however, it's uh, anchor point or pivot point is its center point. Now that's useful when you want to do things like uh, rotate a sprite around its center. Like imagine a clock, you would rotate the hand relative to its midpoint, not uh, one of the extremities. So when you're making a circular rotation, having the pivot point be in the center is definitely useful. However, it's often common to have the center point at the bottom, in the bottom left particularly, especially if say you're working on a platforming a game where the the area you care most about is, say, the feet and how they align with a platform. So you saw we can easily move what we do draw calls relative to by just simply setting the anchor point of the node in question. Now, we can actually do this to the entire layer if we wish, but let's not do that because that gets confusing fast. Now we're going to look at something that's very, very key to understand here, and this is the parenting system inside of Cocos 2DX. And this all works together to create something called a scene graph. Now, a scene graph is essentially the data structure that holds the stuff in your game. And the very key element of that is a node, which we will see shortly. But now what we're just going to do is add another graphic to the scene, the Autobot logo this time, but we're going to parent it to um, our Decepticon logo. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. So first off, we need to create another sprite. Come on, get focused. So we'll just do this with the power of copy and paste. So sprite two. And I shall not typo this time. Autobot. Like so. so we're going to keep the positioning of our first one and our anchoring of the first one exactly the same. And then the second sprite. Actually, we're going to change this up slightly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the first sprite so that it's at 100 and 100. And before I go anywhere with that, I'll actually show you this in effect. So go ahead and run this. So, so far we've only drawn at the origin. I'm just going to show you the effect of setting something to 100 and 100. It's what it did is it moved this guy in 100 pixels to the right and 100 pixels up. So the bottom left hand corner is now here. Now keep in mind if we would kept the pivot point as it was, this, this would instead be drawn about here-ish. So when we move by 100 and 100, we're moving by 100 pixels and 100 pixels relative to the bottom left hand corner of its parent, and that its parent part was critical, as I'm about to show you. So that we've just drawn the original sprite at 100, 100. We're going to leave it there. So now we're going to add a second sprite. Uh, set position, and we'll set this guy at 0, 0 again. However, this time, we're going to go this dot add child. Oops, sorry, sprite dot add child sprite two. Now what I've done here is I've now parented our second sprite to our first sprite. And then our first sprite is still added to the layer like normal. Now let's see what the end result of this is. And this relationship is very important for you to get your head around. There you go. Actually, I didn't get the result I wanted at all because I screwed up. So what I didn't do is set the pivot point. So it actually drew exactly as I wanted it to. It just, all right. So now this is gonna make a bit more sense. Sorry about that. So we're gonna run this. I just forgot to set the pivot point. So we positioned the second sprite relative to its midpoint as opposed to its bottom left, which didn't really illustrate there. This is exactly what I wanted you to see. So even though we're drawing this guy at zero, zero, it isn't drawing at zero, zero relative to the entire window. Instead, it's drawing at zero, zero relative to its parent. So a node within the scene graph gets its coordinate system relative to its parent. So if we wanted to actually draw this guy back at zero, zero, we'd actually have to pass in the coordinate of minus 100, minus 100. So your origin of every child is its parent's origin, not the seam. So this guy got zero, zero because its parent is the layer itself, which makes it down here. But this guy, his origin or zero, zero point was right here because that is the origin point of this guy. Now, had we not 
for example, changed this. So the anchor point for our first one was still about its midpoint. That will make that the origin point of the child, even though the child has it as its bottom left. So our end result here is going to be, see, it's drawn bottom left relative to the midpoint. So the entire parenting and the entire hierarchy that's going on here is all relative to the parent. And that's it. Uh, very key to understand those relationships as they go. Um, so I think that might be all we're going to cover today. Although there are a few things I want to go over that are critical to understanding how all of this stuff works. So I'm going to bring up a browser here and show you a couple of critical classes. So once again, those were the texture formats supported. Shut that down. What I want to show you here is Node. Node is an essential class. Node is a parent class of pretty much um, if it's drawn in 2D or it contains something that draws in 2D, it's a node. So what we have here so far is we have, uh, where did you go? This is a class list. Our node, our direct inherited from node. Sorry, I'm all the way at the bottom. So here's, here's your node base class. You'll see here that a layer is a node. We also used a sprite here. And we look at a sprite really quick. You'll also see that a sprite ultimately is a node. So all of the visible things that parent to each other are ultimately nodes. If it's drawn or contains something that is drawn, it contains a node. And node has a lot of common functionality that is very, very useful that we'll be using quite often here. Uh, but the ultimate relationship that you, you create your scenes basically out of hierarchies of nodes, nodes that contain other nodes that are ultimately contained in a parent node, which is generally a layer. So that relationship of nodes is essentially your scene graph. This is the data structure wherein all the visible things of your scene are composed. And one thing that I was probably confused on, confusing on in my language there was the mixing of origin and either anchor or pivot point. Uh, your anchor point and pivot point are not the same thing as your origin. Your origin is um, basically um, where things start from or where things are drawn relative to, whereas an anchor point is where the, um, the inherited node or the child node draws itself relative to. So it's a bit of a distinguishing. Just remember that ultimately an anchor point is defined using normalized coordinates of so zero to one. Whereas your origin generally is done in pixel coordinates and by default, the origin for uh, the world is going to be the bottom left hand corner or sort of the origin of a layer is the bottom left hand corner. And in an inherited relationship, regardless of how your pivot point is set, the origin of an inherited, so if I am the child of another node, it is again the bottom left hand corner of your parent that is the default pivot point. So uh, an anchor point slash pivot point and an origin are two different things that I unfortunately use somewhat intermingled there. So I'm sorry if I was confusing on that one. If you want some clarification, go to the text-based version of this post. It, it goes into it a little bit more detail and explains it a little bit better than I have in this example. So sorry about the confusion there. Uh, but that's all that we want to cover today. The biggest things to take away from here is how the coordinate system works and how that parenting system works. You want to get to know the word node. You want to know that class. It is very key to understanding the relationship between uh, layers, sprites, etc., and how that whole relationship works to really understand how Coco's 2D graphics works. Now, as we move on, we will see like when we start talking in UI coordinates, etc., there are handy functions to, to switch between uh, UI space, world space, local space, etc. So all these different things can all be dealt with. There's a bunch of nice functions built into Node that we will see in time that will make conversion between the different formats quite simple for us. So don't worry about that over much. Uh, we will cover it more detail when it's more applicable. So hope you enjoyed that. See you all soon. Bye.